Bill Maher sat down for an interview with Elon Musk, and he had the opportunity to actually ask one of the richest people on the planet some really important questions, given how much influence and power Elon Musk has. But expectedly, that didn't happen. And even though I don't think any of us expected a hard-hitting interview from Bill Maher, I mean... I thought that the bootlicking would at least be kept to a minimum, right? That he would contain himself, but that didn't happen. And he ended up deep throating Elon Musk's boot on national television. And if you think that I'm being hyperbolic, let's watch it. There's a very few people who actually make change happen. You are one of those people. Well, you're a likable guy. I mean, Thanks. I mean, I they, mean you know. they attack you a lot. They do. I yeah. love it that you have a sense of humor because a guy as important as you, who makes changes, yeah. could use your powers for evil and not good. The fact yeah, that- the absolutely. You could. <laughs> I would, of course, I would, yeah, never use them for evil. That's no, I crazy. know. Let me get back to you being a genius. Geniuses are gonna be a little quirky sometimes, but you, yeah. your heart is always in the right place. You are trying to fix this world. Jesus Christ, Bill, at least let him take you to dinner first. That was just, embarrassing but it's very on brand for bill maher but as difficult as that was to watch it did provide us with some insight into bill maher and uh you know it's really evident that he looks up to elon musk because you can tell that he kind of sees himself in elon musk in the sense that elon musk like him is another individual who is incorrectly labeled as conservative when they didn't actually change their politics you know it remains the same it's just that everyone else in society has changed that's actually what bill maher said it's a very narcissistic view to have but i mean you know bill maher sees himself in elon musk and identifies with him specifically because of this misattributing of political ideals to him bill maher still maintains that he's not a conservative even though he sounds identical to conservatives but regardless you know he he hates that everyone else views him as a conservative and he specifically doesn't like that people are lambasting him on twitter for having bad regressive antiquated conservative takes now since he was talking to the manager of twitter well he wanted to ask him uh whether or not there was anything that can be done about the mean girls on Twitter who grill him for his dumb fuck takes, and he certainly uh, did ask that very question. See, here's why I don't tweet anymore, because you may be the mayor of Tweet Town now. Yeah, and and I'm the mayor of Tweet Town. I'm getting a cap with yeah, that. And I'm glad, <laughs> and I like it that the mayor likes yeah. my jokes, but the reason I don't do it anymore is because the mob of mean girls is still there. And th th that sure. has not changed. I uh, know. Like, I it's too easy to get canceled. And I don't even know what pisses them off. They're so nuts, these kids. I feel like I'm walking on sure. a roof with a blindfold. I could fall off any time. Yeah. Now, th that was the most innocuous thing, but it's like, you know, I said George Washington was a great president. Oh, how yeah. dare you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I had some flaws, but, but I, I, so overall, how do you uh, fix that? he's instrumental in the Mr. Mayor. creation of the United States. Hey, Bill Maher, this shoe? Am I so out of touch? No, it's the children who are wrong. Corporate wants you to spot the difference between those two clips. They're the same clip. Look, that right there, that clip of Principal Skinner, that is Bill Maher in a nutshell. Rather than talking to people about their frustrations with him and areas of disagreement, he's choosing to stomp his feet and claim that everyone else is wrong and he's right. There's no way he can possibly be wrong. Bill, you live in a bubble and you're out of touch. See, I used to be a fan of you, but you're very clearly surrounded by yes men and you insulate yourself with people who agree with you. You're also insulated by your wealth as well. And this happens to people with a lot of money and a lot of power. Like if you never leave your ivory tower and converse with the common folk, you start to lose touch, you start to lose focus. And that's what happened to Bill Maher and he refuses to admit that he's the one who lost touch. So instead he says, everyone else has changed, not me. I mean, again, I said that this is narcissistic, but like this is quintessential narcissistic behavior right here. It's just, it's so embarrassing that he would say this. There's no level of introspection whatsoever. Now for a good portion of the interview, they end up talking about the dumbest shit imaginable. For example, Bill Maher pretends as if Elon Musk has a PhD in wokeism and asks him to define the woke mind virus as if he knows what that is himself, but let's listen. First of all, what is the woke mind virus? And if we don't deal with this, nothing else can get done. Tell me why you think that. Yeah, so um, I think we need to be very cautious about any, anything that is anti-meritocratic. 
um, and anything that is uh, that that results in the suppression of, of free speech. First of all, it's so hilarious to me that Bill Maher is treating the woke mind virus as the most important issue of our time. It's not one of the most important issues. It is the most important issue of our time. More important than money in politics, capitalism, climate change. No, it's wokeism. That is the barrier to change because, as we all know, our government institutions have been captured by the woke mind virus, and that's why there's so many problems in this country currently. That's leading to the institutional breakdown. You know, if it wasn't for the woke mind virus, then Roe v. Wade wouldn't have been overturned. Uh, you know, corruption in politics, legalized bribery wouldn't have become a thing. I mean, it's just an idiotic viewpoint. It's so dumb. But by Musk's definition, he would be woke because his rise is antithetical to meritocracy, which he says being anti-meritocratic is one of the elements of being infected with the woke mind virus. He doesn't have a rags to riches story. He was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. He was born into wealth and his father owned an emerald mind. Second of all, if being woke also includes censorship, then Elon Musk has that in spades considering that he censors people on Twitter all the time, including doing censorship at the behest of governments. For example, Twitter is censoring critics of Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and silencing critics who share a BBC documentary exposing his human rights abuses. So it turns out that Elon Musk, by his own standards, mind you, is infected with the woke mind virus. But Bill Maher is going to treat him as if he's some sort of an authority on this subject, as if this is a serious issue in the first place. And this next clip, they're going to basically whine more about how bad the woke mind virus is. And it's just like this shows that like Bill Maher is past the point of no return. He's too far gone. There's just no saving him after you see how stupid this conversation is. This uh, woke mind virus, how did it start? Was it bats? Was it a, a <laughs> yeah. escape from a lab? I mean, wh what is your assessment of what? Because it's fairly recent. <laughs> why did, why, how did it start and why? I was, so I was trying to figure out where, where it's coming from. I think it's actually been a long time brewing um, in that it's, uh, I think it's been going on for a while. Um, it, 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 and um, the, the amount of indoctrination that, that's happening in schools and, and universities is I think far beyond what parents realize. Um, and I, I only I sort of came to realize this somewhat, somewhat late. Um, the, the, the experience that we had uh, in, in high school and college is not the experience that, that kids today are having um, and, and hasn't been for, I don't know, ten, 10 years, maybe 20 years. So... Uh, Aren't parents themselves also a big part of the problem? They... Well, I, I suppose in some cases that parents... But, but I think, like, the parents are just generally not aware of what their, their kids are being taught uh, or, or what they're not being taught. But they're, um, they're letting the kids think that they're well, equal. I mean, yeah. Let me let me let me give you, let me give you an example that that a friend of mine told me, which uh, you know, his uh, daughters uh, go to college in, in or oh, sorry, go to high school in, in the Bay Area, um, and um, and he he was asking them like, well, so who are the, you know, who are the first few presidents of the United States? Uh, the, 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 they could name Washington, uh, but and I said, well, what do you know about him? Well, he was a slave owner. What else? Right. Exactly. <laughs> Nothing. Right. I'm like, uh, okay, that's maybe you should know more than that. You know, yeah. Yeah, that, and that, that is the woke mind virus, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Incredible political commentary there from two geniuses. They did a fantastic job demonstrating just how important this issue really is. That right there, that's what the woke mind virus is, knowing that George Washington had slaves. This is the most important issue of our time. We have to address this before we tend to any other issues in society. Let me just remind you all, these are grown men we're talking about here, and they're having a conversation on national television about the dumbest fucking shit imaginable, and we're supposed to take them seriously? Unbelievable. Now, Elon Musk doesn't offer any meaningful commentary here because he's not very bright, but since he's right-wing and he's a right-wing culture warrior himself, he defaults to right-wing bullshit about school indoctrination or some nonsense like that. See, parents... They don't know that their children are being taught all of these things and they're being indoctrinated and the far left is trying to radicalize your kids and yada yada. And what bugs me the most is that 
they're treating this like it's a new phenomenon, which is incredibly ahistorical. First and foremost, the reason why Musk thinks this is new is because he's ignorant. Second of all, Think about what happened during our history and the way that any massive social shift was framed by conservatives. Racist segregationists framed school integration as a far left takeover of schools, and they fearmongered about the danger that black people pose to kids in the same way that conservatives are now fearmongering about the danger that LGBTQ plus people pose to children. So they're using the exact same playbook. But these two morons are saying, well, you know, this whole PC or woke thing is actually very new. No, it's not new. There's always been progress and pushback to said progress. There's always been social blowback to massive social change. The real mind virus here is right wing propaganda that both of these dipshits have fallen for hook, line and sinker. That is the issue here. But Bill Maher also says that the problem is that they're letting the kids think that they're equal. First and foremost, I thought that equality was the goal for liberals like Bill Maher. But yet, you know, he's not conservative. He's still a liberal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Now, second of all, the whole contention with CRT, I thought, was this hyper focus on inequality and privilege and how that was tantamount to the oppression Olympics. And that's why it's bad. But no, they're telling the kids that they're equal. I mean, it doesn't even make sense. Maybe Bill Maher misspoke, but I feel like he should have his talking points down given how significant of an issue this is according to him, right? They're just, like, this is just two dipshits blabbing about the dumbest shit imaginable. That's all that this is here. We really don't have to ascribe any additional value to it, but I mean... They are both out of touch. They're conservative elites. And really what this is about is they're in their feelings because people online make fun of them and criticize them precisely for takes like this. Bad takes, dumb takes. Now, they know that the woke mind virus isn't the biggest issue of our time. But the reason why they're attaching more value to it is because people criticizing them online it makes them feel victimized, and they really want to be the victims. Right-wingers always try to portray themselves as the victims as they victimize everyone else in society. And because these elitist pricks lead very privileged lives, well, they feel the need to make their perceived oppression their entire identities because that's kind of like the one thing, I think, that tethers them to the common folk and makes it seem as if they're not so different than us. See, you know, there are people who struggle to pay the bills, working a shitty job that they hate, where they're mistreated. But also, you know, rich people have problems too. Bill Maher gets criticized online for saying dumb things. We all have problems. See, there's no class differences here. Look away. The real issue, according to these morons, isn't that elites like Elon Musk are exploiting his workers and hoarding wealth. It's the woke mind virus. Like, doesn't this feel like they're trying to distract you from the real problems that class divisions create? It feels that way because that's exactly what they're trying to do, wittingly or unwittingly. All of this is a distraction because they don't want you to know that rich people like them are robbing you blind, specifically Elon Musk. But of course, Bill Maher didn't take the time to ask him about that, ask him about the union busting and the exploitation and the abusive behavior. No, he instead decided to suck him off about how great he is because, um, He's being persecuted by the wokists online. These are not serious people, and only the dumbest people in society watch that conversation and think there was anything substantive said there, because I watched all 20 minutes of it, and it was extremely stupid. You could hear toddlers have a more substantive debate about politics than these two fucking idiots. Up yours, up yours, up yours. Sons of bitches, bitches, bitches. Woke moralism, woke moralism, woke moralism. I dreamed I saw my maternal grandmother. She was stroking herself absentmindedly. I let her have her way. The genital region was exposed. I let her have her way.